Hi and welcome. This video is part one of a series where I will expose the plagiarism of the Qur'an. Have you noticed the Qur'an repeatedly insists it's not the product of a poet? Qur'an chapter 69 verse 41 says, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرْ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ Which means, it is not the word of a poet, little is that you believe. And Qur'an chapter 36 verse 69 says, وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ وَقُرْآنٌ مُبِينٌ Which means, and we have not taught him, meaning Muhammad, poetry, nor is it meet for him. This is only a reminder and a plain Qur'an. But why does the author of the Qur'an seem so defensive here? Why the repeated defense that the Qur'an is not poetry? Well, the Qur'an itself informs us that those who were rejecting Islam in Muhammad's time were accusing him of producing mere poetry. Qur'an chapter 21 verse 5 quotes them as saying, بَلْ افْتَرَاهُ بَلْ هُوَ شَاعِرُ Which means, nay, he has invented it. Nay, he is a poet. While in Qur'an chapter 37 verse 36 they said, وَيَقُولُونَ أَإِنَّا لَتَارِكُوا آلِهَاتِهِنَّ لِشَاعِرٍ مَجْنُونَ Which means, are we going to abandon our gods for the sake of a mad poet? And finally, Qur'an chapter 52 verse 30 records them as saying, أَمْ يَقُولُونَ شَاعِرٌ نَتَرَبَّصُ بِهِ رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ Which means, or do they say, a poet, referring to Muhammad of course, we await for him some calamity by time. The majority of people in 7th century Arabia were illiterate, so many just believed Muhammad without being able to investigate his claims. Many submitted to Islam due to fear and intimidation. But others did speak up, and that's what we see reflected here in these allegations against Muhammad in the Qur'an. So I guess you're wondering, why were these people accusing Muhammad of producing mere poetry? Well, before I answer that, let's first get Muhammad's own personal opinion on the value of poetry. While there are narrations which reveal Muhammad was against the kind of poetry which contained extreme exaggeration, as you see here, the famous Muslim commentator on the Qur'an, Ibn Kathir, lies to us by claiming Muhammad did not like it and he had no inclination towards it. That is a lie because we know Muhammad did value the type of poetry which contained wisdom. As we read in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 8, hadith number 6145, where Muhammad said, Inna min al-shari hikmah, which means, some poetry contains wisdom. So now that we know Muhammad recognized wisdom in poetry, let's investigate the accusation that he was producing it. Actually, because Muslims believe that Muhammad was illiterate, a better question to ask is, who was Muhammad taking poetry from? While in Persia, modern-day Iran, a Christian missionary named William St. Clair Tisdale came in possession of some Arabic poetry attributed to the famous pre-Islamic poet Imrul Qais. What was startling about that find was, it appeared to be evidence that Muhammad had plagiarized lines of poetry from Imrul Qais, because his pre-Islamic poetry was matching what the Qur'an says. For those who don't know, the best estimates show Imrul Qais died around the year 565 AD, which is five years before Muhammad was born. In Tisdale's book, The Original Sources of the Qur'an, he displayed a copy of the poetry and in the appendix to chapter 2 of his book, he explained that the passages of poetry marked with a line above them are also found in the Qur'an. They are Qur'an chapter 54 verse 1, verse 29, verse 31, and verse 46. Actually, verse 1 is found twice in this poem. In addition, Tisdale showed other Qur'an verses which match lines from this pre-Islamic poetry. Here's another picture available online which better displays the corresponding matches between this pre-Islamic poetry and the Qur'an, so you can verify this yourself. Tisdale had shown word-for-word word exact matches, but said, quote, except that in some of the words there is a slight difference, though the meaning is the same, end quote. 
And, of course, those slight differences make perfect sense for someone trying to hide plagiarism. Tisdale therefore concluded that there is some connection between these lines and the similar verses of the Qur'an. So this looks pretty damning and convincing, right? Well, Muslims of course deny the charge Muhammad plagiarized from pre-Islamic poetry. So we need to look at the usual Muslim responses to this problem and refute each one. And that's exactly what I'll do in part two of this video series. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you won't miss my next video. God bless you in Jesus' name and see you in part two.